This is supposed to be one of the fastest cars in its class, and you just don't hear a whole lot about these. So without further ado, Sorry, was that too soon? Yeah. Anyway, here's my HPI Savage XS Flux. I want to thank Basher Bodies for this recommendation, but these are built very different from other cars that are out there, so I want to really tear into this thing right now. I do want to point out a couple things on the box that are interesting to me. I don't yet know what the Flux system is, but I'm excited to take a look oversized suspension and they call it a bulletproof drivetrain. Not only that, to help make it bulletproof, it does have a slipper clutch. It is waterproof and rated at 65 miles an hour, which is 105 kilometers with the optional 34 tooth pinion. I don't know if that's in here, we're gonna see. The world's fastest mini monster truck. Still factory sealed. Even comes with batteries for the controller. That is heavy for its size, wow. Hopefully that's a good thing. You can already see the stoutness. That chassis is the size of a two by four, two by six even. The controller looks like something you'd find in the prop box of the original 1979 Alien movie. Even has a place for your thumb to go while you're controlling. Has servo endpoint adjustment screws inside the holes on the controller itself. Throttle and steering controls, a channel three button, and channel one, two, and three reverse switches on the front. Got stickers, a membership thing, eh, stuff that's not very important, and owner's manual on the car with a lot of information. This is a thick manual. Talks about refilling your shock oil, how to assemble them properly. This is like a full blown service manual. All kinds of information in this. Wow, that's crazy. Well, I really want to see more about this thing's construction. So not only is that chassis the size of a two by six, the gray part of the chassis here actually goes all the way up and creates this ultra thick tank of a car. Your battery goes in this box, which honestly seems like it'll be a pain in the butt. The shocks seem like they work really well. But with how heavy it is, that thing's still gonna bottom out. There's just a whole lot of straight beef on this car. These bumpers have a little spring system that goes up into these super thick shock towers. Captured upper control arms. Super beefy, thick lower control arms. Thick plastic tie rods in the front. Everything is hidden, you can't really see it. Probably will be tough to work on, but I did notice you can access the servo horn from inside the battery tray. Beefy lid protector for roof crashes. This side piece is held on by screws. Uh, I don't care, I'm gonna take it off. I'm real curious. Can't get a straight angle on it with this tire. Got some handy dandy Allen wrenches in here. I'm sure one of those will fit. Well, that's gonna take forever. Off goes the tire. Hey, metal hexes. Okay, there you go. Easy access to the servo. You saw the servo horn access on the other side. Got a nice size motor with 4,000 kV. A rather sophisticated transmission. You got a couple different levels of gear reduction or whatever it's doing in there. So uh, a lot going on. There's an idea of what your transmission looks like. You got your standard pinion, your spur gear, and then another gear reduction there. Slipper clutch is right here. You can see the spring. And they show a plate that you remove, which you can see right here. It's just these two screws, of course, You'll probably have to pull that whole assembly out to get to it. And then the motor unscrews like normal. It has a 28 tooth pinion in it. And you gotta get a 34 tooth if you want it at that 65 miles an hour. Even with that 28 tooth, it's probably still gonna be one of the fastest cars I've got. This seems complicated, uh, but I don't think repairs would be quite as bad as it seems. Even right here on the box, it says easy diff access. Quick access to the front or rear differential by removing four screws. Now, of course, I don't know how easy it is to get the motor out. Hopefully, I'll never have to know. It does not feel like there's foam in these tires, but they are standard 12 millimeter hexes. So you could use any tire that has that, but you would probably have to drill it out a little bit because that hole is a little bigger than most because there is an extra hub on these hexes. Of course, you might be able to just swap the hexes over also. For some reason, it comes with eight extra wheel hexes and they're plastic instead of metal like the OGs. That's also a different body mount than what is on the car, front and rear, so I maybe that's for a different body. Comes with more servo horns that are made for different numbers of teeth. Shims and more body clips and even has a pre-Loctited set screw. 
And this wheel nut wrench has this weird little thing on it, and I don't know what that is. It says ball cup on the side. It does say that it is important that you set up the ESC before running for the first time. It's a really simple process. And there are instructions, of course, for setting your steering and throttle endpoints. There's your steering, there's your throttle. I don't ever show this much of the owner's manual, but this is not just an owner's manual. This is a service manual, and it shows you how to do pretty much everything you'll need. Very impressive. Well, it's time to take it outside for a real test. So we gotta get this thing back together. We're gonna start with the 2S. We're gonna go to 3S as well. Wait, there's even a knob here. What in the world does that do? Oh, it's not a knob. It's the adjustment tool for the steering set points. And the throttle, that's what that is. We're gonna check that stuff now. Okay. This thing's gonna be fast enough with just the 2S battery. So we're gonna start there and then we're going straight to 3S. Thirty-eight miles an hour. Uh oh. Oh. Whoa! Oh! Ah! Oh. Tie rod popped off a ball socket. No big deal. There we go. That was close. Man. What was that, 38 miles an hour on 2S? I think 3S is probably going to be pretty impractical out here, but we're gonna try it anyway. Look, can you see these big old tires? I do see those. Those are really cool big tires. Wow. Oh, that's a curb. Oh, that's a curb. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Speedometer says 53 miles an hour, but I think it was faster than that. 52.9. Yeah, there's no control in this on 3S. <laughs> what was that? Oh. Not steering. All right, so 2S is really all this thing needs. We got 38 miles an hour. We hit 53 with the 3S, but results may vary on that because we had that pretty horrible crash during the speed test and I wanted to make sure I got more in, so I think I only did it that one time. This guy took a whole lot of crashes. Not as bad as some other cars get, but it's seen better days already. We broke a front shock eyelet. Even though it's captured by the control arm, it goes inside there, it still managed to break. But that's no big deal because it actually comes with a couple of those in the spare parts bag. We also broke the outdrive cup for the front differential. You can see there's only half of it there. The rest of it's gone. There's what it's supposed to look like. It's definitely a tough car. I mean, it's, it's really solid. There, there's some flexible stuff on it, which is all good. But that, I mean, that chassis, there's a little chip missing right here but it is just a solid, solid car. And you can hear that when it comes down and lands those big old jumps. It just, the thing just slams into the ground because it's pretty much just a brick on wheels. A really fast brick. I mentioned that there's probably no foam in these tires. If there is foam in them, it's, it's just not dense enough. It's really, really soft. And these tires don't weigh enough for the weight of the vehicle, so it doesn't, do front flips very well. When you try them, the car just kind of floats and doesn't really
flip. Usually the bigger and heavier the wheels, like on these two and the granite, the better the front flips it can do. Back flips, it was good, we can do those. But then that also brings us to the shocks. Even though these shocks are pretty well mm, tuned, minus the one that's broken, it still bottoms out and bounces really hard. Again, because of the weight of the vehicle, this probably needs to double the thickness at least in the shocks. But at the same time, you probably just shouldn't jump this one so high like we did. The whole time, it just, it doesn't really feel like a car that should do that. It's really fast, so it can do it, and it does handle it pretty well, but just something about it didn't feel right. And really, you shouldn't do that with any of them, but, you know. Even though I say that, some of these other cars really do handle it well and still land pretty darn smoothly. This one just, it, it didn't. It, it lands and then bounces, and a lot of times it flips itself over, and I don't consider those lands really i want them to be able to roll away they got a couple decent ones but i think this platform would be a lot better for small jumps and speed runs really oh and i had a couple of uh plastic joints just pop off one of the tie rods popped off of the steering rack here it was a simple pop on but just because of all this stuff it was kind of hard to access and then at one point the arm popped off the steering servo. Not the arm that's right there on the steering servo, but right here. That one popped off as well. Obviously that one was really hard to reach, but I was able to do it without any disassembly except pulling the battery out of the tray. That's why the car stopped steering at the end. I think the biggest con of this car is probably the tires. I just don't like these at all. They're lightweight, they're squishy, too squishy, and really didn't do much for it at all another con is the battery box if you go 3s you can't go with a very tall one honestly again 2s is fine with this unless you're unless you're racing just stick with two i, I think anyway 38 miles an hour is pretty close to what most 10th scales get on a 3s a lot of them are 40 to 45 so 2s it's, it's fast enough but if you have a big open area go 3s it's awesome i mean it's fast it's you saw it. But what it really has going for it is its durability. It is strong. I wish that the joints were better so they couldn't pop off, but I, I, those were big jumps. I can't, you can't blame the car. And then the uh, electronics, I mean, they're solid. This thing needs a wheelie bar, and there is an optional wheelie bar you can get for it, but it doesn't come in the box, just like the high-speed pinion. Again, maybe a 2S battery with that high-speed pinion would be pretty cool. Oh, and of course, the owner's manual was absolutely incredible. Most detailed and informative owner's manual I have ever seen that wasn't a real drive in it with a steering wheel car. That American muscle look is pretty cool, too. Just imagine it's got an LS in it. This would be considered a 12th scale. Here it is compared to a 10th scale Rival MT-10. It's just a little bit smaller. The price is a little high for a 12th scale, but you can see the care and the quality that they've put into it that kind of make that worth it, not to mention the performance. 